This is a troubleshooter white paper investigation dealing with Southern California. I'm TV journalist Judd McElvain. Thank you for joining us. We're going to take a look at the serious matter of police killings, shootings, beating deaths of homeless people, mentally ill people, and intoxicated people. Why is it happening? And over the last 10 years, it seems to be increasing. Before we look into the police beatings, I want you to know I was in the military police. I was a sergeant first class, and I taught military police science. There are thousands of good officers out there ready to put their lives on the line for you. For some reason, here in Southern California, we have a serious problem with law enforcement killings of people that can't seem to help themselves on the street. Why? I wanted you to know that I was a cop once. One of the most recent alleged beatings that ended in death was that of a mentally ill man sleeping on the sidewalk in front of the hospital waiting for the mental health clinic to open. The victim was David Silva, a father of four children, and he had gone to a mental health clinic in the middle of the night. He had mental health problems, and the clinic was closed. They told him it wouldn't open till earlier in the morning. So he went outside, he was intoxicated, and he laid down on the sidewalk across from the hospital and went to sleep. Apparently, someone called the sheriff's office. Visitors who were leaving the hospital and coming out say they saw the whole thing. They recorded it on cell phones. They said the first deputy arrived, jumped out, and took a baton and hit the man in the head who was on the ground. Then other deputies jumped out and they all started beating him with batons. When Silva woke up with the start, they started yelling at him, get down, get down. Well, the witnesses say he started yelling for help, help me. And they kept beating him until he was silent on the sidewalk. Now these witnesses weren't family members of the victim. They were just citizens coming out of the hospital. And one of the witnesses told the newspaper, the Times, that someone yelled, call the cops! And someone else yelled, they are the cops! I want you to hear the 911 call made by one of the witnesses to the Kern County Sheriff's Office. Kern County Sheriff's Office, how can I help you? Yeah, you're dead. Your your police officer is over here on Flowers, and I think it's Tom. Is it, what is it, Mom? Tom, um, there was a man laying on the floor, and your police officer beat the shit out of him and killed him. Well, I have it all on video camera. We video it's a whole scene. One second, okay? This is the supervisor of the communications center. May I help you? Yes. My name is Selena. I'm standing right here on the corner of Flower and Palm right now, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sheriff, the guy was laying on the floor and eight sheriffs ran up and started beating him up with sticks. The man is dead, laying right here, right now. Okay. And they're trying to survive him. I got it all on video camera and I'm sending it to the news. These cops have no reason to do this to this man. Two of the witnesses say they have the entire beating on two separate cell phones and they've seen the video. But the sheriff's deputies followed them home and stayed at their houses until they would give up the video for evidence. And you've guessed it, now the video is missing. One phone has no video on it and the other cell phone only has 11 seconds and you can't identify anyone. They've been turned over to the FBI. Sheriff Donnie Youngblood says, I have no idea what happened to the video. The Kern County coroner reported that David Silva had heart disease and he died of natural causes. Silva's death was ruled an accident. Now the beating and the police dog bites were not mentioned as a contributing cause of the death or a heart attack. Who is the Kern County coroner? Sheriff Donnie Youngblood. He holds both offices in the county, 
and he defended the actions of his deputies. The official coroner's report said the cause of death was natural causes. This is the location where another mentally ill patient named Kelly Thomas was beaten and two days later died. He was beaten by Fullerton police. There seemed to be no reason to beat him. He wasn't charged with the crime. They dumped him in the street right there where those marks are. And this is a homemade memorial. And as you can see, they drop things off for the homeless here by the memorial. And they have a picture of Kelly Thomas. He died because he was homeless and he was on the street. Three officers are charged in his death and there's going to be a trial. Kelly's father, Ron Thomas, is a veteran Orange County Sheriff's deputy. He is fighting for justice for his dead son. Three Fullerton police officers have been charged in the killing of his son. Ron, why are so many police officers, sheriff's deputies involved in beatings across the country? Well, I think it has to do with the police unions. You know, they've been running uh, with uh, impunity forever. They're so well protected, they can do whatever they want. The chiefs come out or the sheriffs come out and protect their officers or deputies. So they've been able to, to operate like this for a long, long time. They're still operating like this. Uh, it's not right at all. And finally, uh, some of the officers are being held accountable. Well, are there rogue officers on forces? Oh, absolutely. And Fullerton's a prime example. You know, not all the men and women of the Fullerton Police Department are bad cops. Some are very professional. But we had that one group of rogue cops that beat my son to death. And I've never held the whole department accountable, uh, certainly some of the higher ups, uh, as long as the officers, but not all of them. So rogue cops, rogue deputies, absolutely. But it seems like you can't even fire them unless you can convict them of a crime. Well, that's very true. It has become so bad with the protection that they get that they go right back out on duty uh, for up to a year or more before they're even charged. You know, you or I, we'd be put in jail immediately. But they, course, they, they, yeah. have, they have too many rights, and uh, we really need to take some of them away. Take another look at this. Is it true that some of these officers have been involved in beatings before or shootings are right back on the force now and they've done it for a second time? Absolutely. You know, we have a case in uh, Downing, California with Michael Nida and the officer shot Michael Nida in the back with an MP5 machine gun, murdered him on the sidewalk, unarmed. And he went right back out on patrol, and he's still on patrol. Same thing in the city of Long Beach uh, with the Doug Zerby case. Officers blew him away, literally, with a shotgun and, uh, and, and uh, handguns. And right back out on patrol, they're still on patrol today. To do and they again. never spoke to him. That's correct. Well, in the Zerby case, they, 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 he didn't even know that they were there. Right. And he didn't have a weapon. No. He had a nozzle for a hose. A hose nozzle. That's right. I've had people ask me, what can law enforcement do? I mean, cops have said to me, we can't seem to control this. Well, I agree. There are officers who, um, you know, they're, they're basically controlled and bound by their fellow officers. You know, that code of silence thing. Right. So really, it's not so much, in my opinion, what the officers can do or law enforcement can do, but what can we, the people, do? And we need to get into our, uh, our state senators and uh, see if we can't change some of this legislation and uh, introduce new legislation to change the Peace Officer Bill of Rights. It protects them too well, absolutely too well, and uh, make them more like the common person. Ron, why are police officers, sheriff's deputies involved with beating citizens? Well, they're they're operating with uh, impunity. Uh, they haven't been punished for it. They get away with it. They feel they can do anything that they want uh, these days. It, it, basically, like uh, the, the people say, who are you going to call when a cop's beating you? And uh, they operate on that. Police officers and sheriff's deputies you can't control. Absolutely. There's groups of officers probably in every department across our nation who are just uncontrollable. They go out, they do what they want to do, they beat people, they, 
they kick people, I'm sure they kill people uh, at will uh, whenever they want to do this, completely out of the uh, lines of the law and uh, the uh, law enforcement, the peace officers, um, uh, code of ethics. Here are some examples. News reports say an inmate was killed in the Kern County Jail and three deputies were convicted in his beating death. Another case reported by the news media, a man in the Kern County Jail died after being struck by a baton 33 times and shocked with a taser 29 times. There was a tragedy in Riverside County when Riverside police shot a young woman to death. 19-year-old Tyresha Miller was shot to death by Riverside police while she was sleeping in her locked car. She was waiting for medical help that had been called for by her family. The officers could not wake her up. She had a gun on the seat beside her for her protection, according to her family. One officer tried to break out a window of the car, and it made a loud noise, and he fell backwards onto the ground. The other officers apparently thought he was shot, and they opened fire on her. The officer was not shot, and she had never fired a weapon, and she had never had a gun in her hand. But, the young lady, the 19-year-old, Tyresa Miller, was dead. It was ruled as an accidental event. In Long Beach, 35-year-old Doug Zerby was shot to death by Long Beach police while he sat on a porch waiting for a ride. He was playing with a hose nozzle like this one. The cops thought it was a gun. They surrounded him. They crept up on him, never spoke to him. They never said, like, drop the gun. They said nothing, and they opened fire on him, and they killed him. No cops were charged in the shooting. Then there was the shooting death of an unarmed 31-year-old active Marine, Sergeant Manuel Loggins. He was shot by an Orange County deputy sheriff. His family said the Marine was a very religious person, and early each morning he would take his girls and they'd go to a local high school and walk around the track and they would say their prayers. Then he would take them on to school. However, this time his car crashed or pushed open the back gate at the school, and a sheriff's deputy arrived and ordered the Marine to stop, put his hands up, and come forward to him. And the Marine said, look, I gotta get the girls to school. He just got in his car. The deputy ended up shooting the Marine through the window of the car with the girls sitting in the back seat, and it was dark dark out and it's certainly dark in the car. The deputy said he feared for the girl's safety and he shot into the dark car and killed their father. The deputy was not charged. Now the county has paid the family a settlement of 4.4 million dollars. Taxpayers all over the country are paying millions of dollars in settlements to law enforcement agencies for killings like this. Now, after a two-year FBI investigation, the U.S. Justice Department said Los Angeles County has been harassing people in the Antelope Valley. They say the deputies have actually gone after those citizens. L.A. County Sheriff Lee Baca says he is now going to investigate. In another case, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department confirms it had a gang of deputies who called themselves the Jump Out Boys. This is their tattoo. Each deputy wore the tattoo. When they were involved in a shooting, they would add smoke coming out of the gun on their tattoo. They have now been disbanded by the L.A. County Sheriff's Office. And Sheriff Bacchus told the news media he didn't even know they existed. He didn't know that there was a gang of deputies. However, two years ago, 
at a Christmas party, two different gangs of sheriff's deputies had a major fight, and two deputies had to go to the hospital. It was a Christmas party for the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Now another case where a mother of two suffering from mental illness and drug use died in the back seat of an LAPD police car after being kicked repeatedly in the stomach area. She had dropped off her two children at an LAPD substation because she said she was too sick to take care of them. She told the officers their grandmother would pick them up soon. She was then later arrested for child endangerment. According to a report from Police Chief Charlie Beck, the woman, 35-year-old Alicia Thomas, was kicked in the stomach area repeatedly by a veteran female LAPD officer. There was video of the kicking of Thomas, who was handcuffed and had asked the officers for medical help. But, she was pushed and kicked into the backseat of the police car. The door slammed, and the video showed that she died right there in the back of the police car. This happened about a year ago, but was apparently covered up. L.A. Police Chief Charlie Beck has launched an investigation into the actions of three additional officers and a supervisor who were at that scene. The official cause of death right now is listed as undetermined. What does the California law say about officers using deadly force? Let me read it to you. An officer may use deadly force only when the officer reasonably believes that the action is in defense of a human life, including the officer's own life, or in the defense of any person in immediate danger of serious physical injury. Now, who decides if the officers are charged? The county district attorney. Remember, in many cases, this is a split-second decision under stress. There is somewhat of a consensus in Southern California law enforcement and the mental health community that officers need more training on how to deal with the mentally ill, the confused, and those intoxicated by liquor or drugs. But remember, it's not easy working the streets of Southern California. As a law enforcement officer, you have to make split-second decisions that involve life and death. And you want to be able to go home at the end of your shift. The majority of the officers and deputies are hard-working, and they want to serve and protect. And they do it every day without any fanfare. They save people and protect lives. Here are some recent examples. L.A. County Deputy Sheriff Jenna Underwood Nunez, who was five months pregnant at the time, and she heard a teenager yelling for help and splashing in the water 200 feet off the shore. She dashed to the shore, she dove in, pulled him out, and saved his life. She was five months pregnant, too. Another example of a hero, San Bernardino County Deputy Sheriff Arturo Ramirez. He ran into a burning apartment building and saved a seven-year-old girl from the flames. LAPD officers Paul Maldonado and Kurt Logan saved an 83-year-old woman who was choking and couldn't breathe in a restaurant in Woodland Hills. And finally, there is a homeless woman who was saved by the fast thinking of an LAPD officer, Officer Kyle Rice, who pulled her from a small burning tent in South Los Angeles. The officer suffered minor burns on his hands. The homeless elderly woman was not burned. There are far more officers who take their jobs, protect, and serve very seriously. And 
Thankfully, there are more of those officers than the ones involved with deaths of people in their custody. Some of the good cops have said to me, someone has to question why this is happening in our departments. They say something is wrong in the way the system is operated and they want it corrected. One officer said, don't quote me now, but the bad cops have to go. Remember, these are good officers and deputies. And like I said, thank goodness they are in the majority. And they should get all the credit for their professional work and action. The purpose of this documentary was to bring to you the facts the way we found them and let you make up your own mind about how the community of Southern California may have to have stronger laws for the protection of the entire community and especially the mentally ill. If you'd like to contact me, my address is troubleshooterjud.com. Thank you for joining us.